Welcome to the EEPROM 9. Some of you will be looking at this circuit board thinking, Ooh, what's this interesting device? As I slightly, subtly move my uh, helping hands out the way. Well, this is a CCC... A, C <laughs> a CCC... C C C C a CCTV controller from the 1990s. Specifically... 1995, late 1995. There might even be some 96 parts on here. Although I don't see them off the top of my head, but they probably exist. So what is this thing? Well, back in the day, um, you had to record to a video recorder, which was usually a specialist time-lapse video recorder, but it looked like a normal video recorder. And this would... This is where you'd attract a load of external alarms. The back here is the BNC inputs and also would have a few outputs to um, CCTV monitors, VCRs, that kind of stuff. That's 12 volt power input. I think it takes a few other voltage inputs because the case has been taken off and thrown in the bin basically because I wanted to pull this to bits. This was given to me by my uni tutor years ago. It comprises of several circuit boards, most of which are control panels. All obsolete, of course. But I want to throw it in contrast to a modern one. So here we have the um, basic, let's call it the I.O. board. It's got some relays on it, it's got a few like standard logic chips. We've got some 74HC257Ds. Uh, we've got two of those, we've got a uh, 74HC04 which is a um, quad nan, it's a, it's a, that, it's a not gate, it's a, I think six input not gate or something, not six input but six not gate, six or eight, then we've got some, um, I don't recognise these part numbers but yeah it's basically for IO, got some good old header pins, they're always handy, they're always worth saving, loads of 78L05 regulators, so this board's covered in useful stuff. This rather nice control front panel that has this array of nice little um, 3mm LEDs, a multiplexed switch array that goes to a PIC microcontroller, a 1990s PIC microcontroller made in the 27th week of 1995. And it is a, for those of you who want to know, a PIC 16C64. I don't know if it's currently manufactured model anymore, but hey, I just thought that's a fun little fact that that controls basically the button interface. Puts it out through some sort of probably proprietary serial interface into the main motherboard. And then to get all the nice overlays and switching between different cameras, because these things can... Um, like these days, output multiple cameras to uh, like a single video recorder. No, that's not how video recorders work. What they tended to do was selectively slat, like go on this thing of like switching between the cameras periodically and then recording to that. There would have been more complicated systems that would have done more advanced things like output it to multiple video recorders and that kind of stuff. But this was like a single one solution. I also had the CCTV monitor with it, but I don't have that anymore. But one thing that's quite interesting is these aren't FPGAs. These are the predecessor to FPGAs known as CPLDs. They're basically the same thing, but just on a smaller scale. And these are all their configuration EEPROMs. Now, I might, I probably will read these at some point, but I don't have any inkling to do it right now because, well, it's just going to be, well, control data for these, the configurations, basically. But here we have the CPU, which is a Hitachi H8 slash 3002 and then the rest is basically a bunch of uh, pals and gals which unfortunately are not the ceramic variant here's one here it is a pal in this case these are the uh, EEPROM labelled uh, chips here that aren't EEPROMs they're actually gals and pals probably mostly pals in this case 
Same thing as these, just even smaller scale. Do they even make these sorts of chips anymore? And then we have just your standard 7-4 logic, which is beautiful. This board is caked with standard 7-4 TTL logic, which for someone like me, who loves all this sort of stuff, this is brilliant. We also have some specific Sony chips, which are going to be guaranteed to do with video and video processing of the 90s. We've even got Toshiba one, complete with little inductor coils here. So this is going to be once again, this is all to do with analog video generation circuitry. We've got a power supply section over here, indicated very handily by capacitors. We've got an analog devices chip here. There had to be an analog devices chip here. That's interestingly close straight to the uh, clock battery, which is lovely old and corroded these days. It looks like an LR44. Shall we find out if it is like an LR44? Oh, it's minging. It's a uh, called Photo 675, uh, made in the USA, and there's no other information about it. Well, as we all know, with corroded batteries, we should always put them back in the circuit boards they come from. Because that's the right thing to do. And then, of course, we've got a 16 megahertz crystal. Mmm, smelling a bit Arduino-y here, even though that's not an Arduino-style chip, because Arduino is at mill. I love the Arduino platform, it is awesome. But yeah, there's a whole range of, you know, just your standard 7.4 logic and... You know, smaller cell CPLDs, RAM and memory for them. So, you know, quite advanced stuff to do pr video processing in the 90s. And now, for contrast, let's swap over to a more modern system. Specifically, I found this in, L in London at the side of the road. This is a Swan 8 channel HD digital video recorder. The HD is basically a bunch of bull crap. And this sticker is original to the unit because they all seem to have these. I've seen them on eBay and then there's like probably for like some mobile phone app nonsense we don't care about. The nice thing about doing the videos on these is I can do this. But I actually was using this as my own CCTV controller for a while until I accidentally blew it up. So I've now got a new CCTV controller controlling my cameras. It's actually a lot better. Even though it's basically uh, built with the same technology. So the back of this, we have 8-channel um, CCTV, which it can record all at the same time. Now that having to swap between cameras to a different VCR. Audio in for a, mi for a microphone. Audio out, so it can output to a telly. Interestingly, this one does not have an analog video out. A lot of them do, even my new one that I've replaced this with does. It has an eSATA, obviously for adding in an external hard drive. HDMI, I think you can guess what that's for on VGA. You know, kind of a given. DC uh, power input of some sort. 12 volt power input. I guess this is just like if it's a bus bar thing, so it doesn't have to use a barrel jack. Ethernet, two USB 2 ports. Pretty standard for a CCTV controllers, just the layout varies. They don't all have this though, and they usually have an analog video output that you can connect it to an old CRT monitor if you want. So, it's only four screws to get him open. He's quite easy to take apart. I should turn my soldering iron off, shouldn't I? I'm liking this new setup. This is a massive improvement over how I had it before. I'll probably give you guys a lab tour if you want of the uh, new setup and you can see it's a lot more tidy and neat and organised. Although neat and organised you would not think looking at this but we all have our own interpretations and all technical people have their hordes. Oh, and most of them. The workshop in the sheds is where I allow mess. So we'll just pop the top off. You've got a little board going to the two blue LEDs at the front. And you can see, to do the same job at a more, much more advanced level, <laughs> it's basically naffle in this thing. Let me get this in and zoom you in. Try and get the board in shot. 
sorry there isn't the resolution for this. Yes, I know I'm doing the travesty art. It makes me cringe to do this, but this is a case where digital zoom is actually not completely worthless. So, we basically got the big brains that does everything. The CPU, what you would call it, does this thing come off? It is a bit um, wibbly-wobbly, but is he going to come off? Because it doesn't really matter to break this, because, well, it's already broken. This is a, if we get a scrapey tool, a.k.a. a screwdriver, actually, we could do one better. We could do it properly with alcohol spray. That would avoid that and use a wank rag to wipe off the heat sink compound. And then the heat sink compound proves me a liar because it's a bastard. Yeah, it's that sticky stuff that doesn't come off without physical exertion. Okay, good. The part is becoming visible. The process is actually good. Although saying that, it's the inputs that aren't. It's the inputs that are naff. So you could technically reuse this thing if you really, really, really wanted to. And then just for ease. It is a, it's difficult to see, HT3521 or RPCV100, made in China, which is about as surprising as the sun rising in the morning. But that's basically the brains. You've got what are the video input chips here. You can basically just follow the traces and these by these are what have gone naff. Why? I don't know. Well, I know why, because I put voltage through them where they shouldn't have gone by accident. These things happen. Hopefully my head's not getting in the way. Um, it's got uh, 27 megahertz crystals, which were, as far as I know, divides down to the frequency. We've got some memory here. This looks like RAM. Although it could easily be RAM. Uh, it looks like RAM. I wouldn't be surprised if this has its own uh, ROM inside. You've got Ethernet controllers. Some sort of USB hub thing there. This actually outputs directly straight to the HDMI and VGA. So that's built into its functionality of what the chip does. 24 megahertz for its main oscillator crystal. Some sort of programming header there. Something that looks like an EEPROM chip down there. So let's use our super flickery nasty torch to light him up. And he is a... Not a 27C series. He's a HYM1307Z. So I don't know what he's doing off the top of my head. Some small switch mode voltage regulators down there. Clock crystal is right next to it. So this is a clock chip of some sort. It's also right next to the clock battery. As if that wouldn't give it away. See, that's just a clock chip of some sort. we got another 8-pin one down here. Doesn't look like it, but it's right next to voltage regulator, so it could easily be part of that little secret hidden secret squirrel button. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, these days, we've managed to convert all this basically down to this, and this does a whole lot more. Oh, and it still has all the alarm functionality in that, which you'd uh, hook up with. Uh, I think that's what that is to do with the alarm. But yeah, these have alarm outputs that can output it through USB and periphery hardware. You know, they can have a surprising amount of function to them. But I just thought that was an interesting contrast to show, like, basically two decades worth of um, technological development. Although, I think this is from the, uh, sometime in the mid-2000s-ish, like, maybe past 2010, so, yeah. Say roughly about 20 years. I think it's from about 26, yeah, it's from about 2016, because of when the hard drive was manufactured. 
But yeah, I think that's quite an interesting little contrast. You've got the annoying little piezo buzzer that everything like this has. Sometimes they're not always piezo buzzers. Sometimes they're actually proper coil speakers, which would explain the really quiet ones. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'm going to get some par dinner off my parents tonight, because why not? Free food!